breaking, 48 hours after North Korea launched missile look what just happened over Korea. Fake news media continues to brainwash and control the minds of their liberal audience with this idiotic notion of a Russian coalition which hunt. The real news is, North Korea is an actual threat to the United States unlike any threat before. North Korea has been testing their missiles which lately have been successful and it obviously got the United States' attention. The test shows that it can actually reach some of the major cities in the United States, like New York even Boston. Tensions are high with relations with President Trump trying to put pressure on China to work with North Korea to eliminate the threat. Sadly enough the Chinese did not help. Now that America is back with a new Sharif in town, it was time to send a tough message to baby Huey and his regime in North Korea. They sent B-1s flying over the Korean peninsula and was joined by four F-15 fighter jets from the South Korean Air Force. The B-1s then performed a low pass over Osun Air Base, South Korea, before leaving South Korean airspace and returning to Guam. Throughout the approximately 10-hour mission, the air crews practiced intercept and formation functions, enabling them to improve their combined capabilities and strengthening the long-standing military-to-military relationships in the region, the Pentagon said. Via Fox News and Young Khans This week, North Korea fired its second intercontinental ballistic missile. It was extremely troubling because analysts suggested the missile could hit some major U.S. cities including Los Angeles, Denver, and Chicago. They also said it might be able to hit NYC or Boston, with a little luck. The U.S. responded with bombing drills over the Korean peninsula. Secretary of State Rex Tirson is consulting with Japan and South Korea on further response. Trump and Tirson also criticized China's failure to be effective in getting North Korea to respond appropriately. The U.S. and its allies are prepared to use rapid, lethal and overwhelming force, if necessary. Against North Korea, the commander of the U.S. Pacific Air Forces warned Saturday night. The statement from General Terence J. O'Shaughnessy, U.S. Pacific Air Forces commander, came after the militaries of the U.S., South Korea and Japan spent 10 hours conducting bomber jet drills over the Korean Peninsula. The training mission was a response to North Korea's recent ballistic missile launches and nuclear program and part of the U.S. regular commitment to defending its allies in the Asia-Pacific region, the general's statement said. The time for talk is over. The danger the North Korean regime poses to international peace is now clear to all, said United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley in the statement. North Korea remains the most urgent threat to regional stability, O'Shaughnessy said. Diplomacy remains the lead, he said. However, we have a responsibility to our allies and our nation to showcase our unwavering commitment while planning for the worst-case scenario. If called upon, he added, we are ready to respond with rapid, lethal and overwhelming force at a time and place of our choosing. North Korea conducted test launches of ICBMs on July 3 and July 28, and has claimed that its weapons can now reach the U.S. mainland. The country's recent actions have drawn condemnation from President Trump, and prompted U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tirson to confer with counterparts from South Korea and Japan to develop a response, Fox News has reported. Both Trump and Tirson have criticized China, saying the Beijing government has failed to use its influence to discourage North Korea from developing its nuclear program, Fox News reported. On Saturday, two U.S. Air Force B 1B bombers, under the command of U.S. Pacific Air Forces, joined counterparts from the South Korean and Japanese Air Forces in sequenced bilateral missions. According to the Pentagon, the U.S. bombers took off from Anderson Air Force Base in Guam, then flew to Japanese airspace, where they were joined by two Kakajaitai, Japan Air Self-Defense Force, F-2 fighter jets. The B-1S then flew over the Korean Peninsula where they were joined by four F-15 fighter jets from the South Korean Air Force. The B-1S then performed a low pass over Osun Air Base, South Korea, before leaving South Korean airspace and returning to Guam. Throughout the approximately 10-hour mission, the air crews practiced intercept and formation functions, 
enabling them to improve their combined capabilities and strengthening the long-standing military-to-military relationships in the region, the Pentagon said. U.S. Pacific Command maintains flexible bomber and fighter capabilities in the Indo-Asia Pacific theater, retaining the ability to quickly respond to any regional threat in order to defend the U.S. and its allies, the statement said. This test showed that if push comes to shove the U.S. military is ready for what possibly could lie ahead, though diplomacy is the most preferred means of action, the United States is ready to show why they are the lead superpower in the world, in the world.